think. Sometimes I just go on and off. Hey everyone, welcome to Cat's Creations, where tonight I'm gonna need your input on this design. So I'm not sure if this one will require a bow because we're gonna add a lot of embellishments to it. So I'm kind of like at a crossroads. I have to build it in order to figure out whether or not that's going to work. So if this is your first time joining, first of all, welcome. Um, welcome to our live and um, trying to make sure if you're on YouTube and catching this as a replay. Also, let us know if this is the first time you are finding me on YouTube as well. I'd like to welcome you. Um, let's make sure everything is up. Everything is so working. I'm kind of like, Eeks. I was listening to my iPad earlier. So I want to make sure I turn down all the volume. So, um, Fran says hi from North Carolina. So, um, all right. So we're going to do a non-traditional type of a snowman. It's going to kind of be a retro 70s snowman. So, um, because we've already done all the snowman plush wreath kits and we've done a snowman face wreath. So I just thought that today we would incorporate something simple, um, but using some non-traditional colors. So let me describe all the materials first of all. So we have a 10 inch round frosty snowflake cafe and bakery, which features fresh snow, iced coffee, hot cocoa and cookies, no hats, no mittens, no service, which is kind of a play on all those beach type of um, signs. This is from Personalize It by Pam. You can find her on Etsy. We are going to be using this iridescent, I guess you would call it a turquoise snowball mesh that you can get from Craft Outlet. Um, we're going to be using this little plush snowman. He's going to be fitting right into our design. And then um, a ton of different ribbon colors for um, the outside. And then we're going to add in, because this is a cafe and bakery, we're going to add in some sweets. So these are from Hobby Lobby. You can pick these up. Um, this is your uh, peppermint candy pick. And then you know that I am, I love using these. So um, I have another one if we needed to break it into that. But I like it because not only do we have it here in the sign, we have it here on his buttons, we have it here in the picks. So, and um, it's also on our ribbon. So we're kind of taking all of our color palette ideas um, from the sign itself. So let's get started. So I'm going to do this one a little bit differently because I find that um, a lot of you are just watching it for the tutorial um, aspect of it. And some of you are looking um, into it for other reasons, but I just thought that I would move the design phase more to um, like, instead of you watching me put in 18 pieces of deco mesh, I'm only going to show you how to set up um, a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame so that your deco mesh lays a lot better if you decide to add bows, embellishments, or ribbon tails. So um, this one's plain Jane. We don't have anything on it. So this is exactly how you are going to do all six of the um, wreath frame. You're going to take your pipe cleaner in each section where the weld marks define it. You're going to wire together the first two. Okay, just like this. Because sometimes people are getting so confused when we had everything out. I was like, okay, let's just go basic, okay? And then we're gonna use this and the weld to find a midway point to wire together the outside two. And it basically runs every two to three and a half inches. We're gonna do the same on this side. And I'm just using these colors because this is the color palette that we're using, the light blue. It's kind of like a teal, turquoise blue, the red and white. So. Once you do this all the way around, you will have a grand total of six on the inside, 12 on the outside for a grand total of 18. So we're going to utilize our snowball mesh. This is cut to 20 inch pieces. We are just going to ruffle this because this is supposed to be the easiest method if you're starting off as a wreath maker, but yet so many people struggle 
with not knowing how to lay their mesh to get it to where, you know, they can lay their bows in, they can lay their ribbons in, they can lay their tails in. So we're gonna take the finished edge, finished edge goes towards the center. Laura said, hi Kat, this is my third time watching. Love what you do, I'm from Missouri. Hi Lori, welcome. D, D said, love your teaching and reads. D from South Carolina. Hi D, welcome. Okay, so I went ahead because like when I have it set up normal, for some reason I always gravitate towards the inside first. So remember in each section, the inside one is nothing more than a filler for the inside and it's also a filler for the outside two pieces. So however you want to put it together, there's no right way or wrong way. It's just whatever way is easier, whatever way you prefer. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. I am going to move my cut edge back. So remember this goes on top of our inside piece, just like that, okay? So we always wanna make sure that we've, you know, you grab all the ends and make sure that that's laying completely on top of this. Also that your inside piece is also completely covering those areas where you would come in and put in your side piece. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this one. Hi Anna, you were doing some Christmas grapevine wreaths. I was going to do grapevine, but I think I'm going to do that on um, next Friday. I think we're going to do the, the deer, the winter deer, and we'll do that on a grapevine. I'm still playing around with the design on that one. So here we go again. We open our pipe cleaners. We're gonna take that. We're gonna lay that directly on top. And then we wanna make sure that this comes all the way down. This is our center piece so that it covers the side. And then also the same thing on the inside that it's covered underneath. And then in order to assure that we can see both pieces in each section for ribbon tails, we want to make sure that we just gently take our cut edges, kind of fold them back just a little bit so that this way you can actually see everything. And then here is where you'd get into the next section. You would take your side pieces, you would have them folded. Here's where your first um, deco mesh piece would go in that section and these two would overlap each other so that you have a really good fill for this. Any questions at all on putting together the base? I thought that this would be easier to break it down so you could see a section done at a time and then you would just keep working the sections however you want. I have people who do all the inside ones and then they do all the outside. I have people who do a section at a time or some people who just do it whichever pipe cleaner comes first, which is my method. But um, hope you like that. So if you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to move forward. I've already done an entire wreath, less these three pieces, just like what we did from Friday. So I'm just going to pick these up because they're already done. This deco mesh, by the way, you can cut with a wood burning tool. So I've already gotten all of it done. So now I'm just laying in my center piece here. Kathy Renison said uh, she went to her first painter conference yesterday. Oh, nice. She met Lori from UITC and Michelle from Monkey's Creations. Nice, okay. Out of fun foam. Hi, Anna. She said she was doing some Christmas grapevine wreaths. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, Hi, Susan. that one's all done. I'm just taking this one apart. And then this, it says a mesh. I'm assuming it's probably These are 20 inches. inches, yes. So a long time ago, I figured out um, nobody likes to store extra deco mesh. So the formula to use one complete roll of deco mesh and not have any leftovers is if you have 18 places to place mesh, if you cut your pieces, depending upon your method, 
to 20 inches, it will take exactly one roll. 18 pieces at 20 inches is, uh, what is it, 360? Yep. 360 inches, or which, yards. yeah, 10 yards or, what is it? Feet. Yes, 36 feet. So I'm going to pull the last one out, just like this. We'll go ahead and find, yeah, 30 feet, not 36 feet. Okay, place this right on the inside. Grab my other end right here. We'll add this last little piece. And then this wreath base is done. So you always wanna make sure you have good coverage from one section to the next. You always wanna make sure your inside pieces for your pipe cleaners are pulled up. And I think we're gonna not utilize the inside six between our sign and our snowman. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna be well at um, exactly what we need in order to complete that. But see how now on the outside, you can see all those sections for your pipe cleaners. Carol asked, so do you center your piece in each section first? No, that's how you do your pipe cleaners, right? It's three in, three in each section and they're basically somewhat centered. Yeah, so you center the first one on the first inner two rings, mm -hmm. these two, and then using this and this weld, you kind of find, you know, it's not going to be exact. It doesn't have to be exact, exact by any means. I mean, if you're going to get out there with a ruler and measure, um, it's probably going to take you way too long, and it's not going to matter anyway because there's more than enough mesh to cover the sections. And then you do the same on this side. So on the inside, because you have six sections, you'd have six interior pipe cleaners, and then you would have um, 12 on the outside. Adding them all up, it's going to give you 18. A D, it's a 14-inch Dollar Tree wreath ring. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to set that one aside, and we're going to go in, and I'm going to add in all my ribbon tails and my half bows. So let me show you the ribbon. I love these. So I decided we would alter, because I was using the clues from the sign, right? We have peppermint candies. So I thought we would utilize this black and white, because we have the black, we have the white. Um, this is what I call film strip ribbon, because it has the little edges. Reminds me of, what, yeah, was it 35? Style. 110. Yeah. 110? Or the old? Yeah, 110 and 35. So, um, and then it's got all the Christmas candy on it. These are 14 inch pieces cut to um, two and a half inch pieces cut to 14 inch pieces. Then we have inch and a half ribbon cut to 19 inch pieces with the snowflakes because we've got the snowflakes happening in there. Plus it's white and red, which is the same color of our snowman. So this is a pairing. And then we're going to take Frosty's magic hat. So we have the hat ribbon which is all like staying in that red, white, and black theme. Um, two and a half inch cut to 14 inch pieces. And then we have this red and blue with glitter um, diagonal stripe, which is taking it from the diagonal stripe on the side. So I decided to pair red with blue and blue with red. And so those are gonna be our color choices for the outside pieces. So I am going to be doing these together so that we just conquer one section at a time and then we don't have to go back so we always fold then you're going to you fold your ribbon in half to find your middle point and then we're going to lay this right on the inside give it a nice twist see how it automatically concaves like a bowl you want to push that out so that it folds out or flips out so like an upside down bolt and then we're going to take our snowflake ribbon we're going to put the dovetailed edges together go up about halfway pinch in so that from where i pinch to the end of my ribbon is two inches and then we're going to lay that right on the inside we're going to give it all the required numbers of twists. And then I'm going to cut this one so that, oops, 
Let me get my scissors off the camera. So that we have about an inch to an inch and a half pipe cleaner remaining. So in order to fluff this, we are going to open the loop. We have to right side one of our ribbon tails so that the pretty color is facing us. Pop those back out. And then I like to place them in between. This way we can still see the mesh. We can still see both sides of the ribbons. And um, for colors, we're going to do blue um, glitter balls, which I had from Hobby Lobby. And we're going to pair that with red glitter balls, staying with our color theme, just like that. Okay. Now, do I glue them on? Yes, but first I go through and I put them all on. Then when I go to pull them off, I can see where the hole is. I usually do this after I finish doing the live. I will put a little dot of glue on there, take this, and then feed that right back on to the hole. And then that way those are glued on and those are secure. You said pretty side out. For the ribbon, yes, you always want your yes. ribbon to be pretty side out. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so now we're gonna go with the magic hat. Same theory. Fold it in half just so we can find out where's the middle in this ribbon. So when we gather it, it is centered on both sides. We're going to lay this inside. One complete twist. Fan this out. We're going to grab our diagonal ribbon this time. Two inches in. Place this right on the inside. Give it three or four twists just to make sure that while you're fussing with it, I don't know why it would ever come loose, but sometimes it does. I'm going to cut these back down. Again, putting on my blue. Put on the red. Open my loops up. Right side, one of my tails. Now, when you're starting off, you can just do one thing, like go all the way around and alternate all your ribbon tails, then go in and add all your half bows. I invented these because I thought that when people did a crisscross of a ribbon, it felt like there was something missing on the inside, like it needed something else. So I just figured, well, we'll call it a half bow. Even though it has two tails, it only has one loop. Uh, the ribbons. Where can you get all the ribbons? So, I believe they all came from Craft Outlet. Um, and the diagonal ribbon, inch and a half, is 19 inches long. Yes. All the inch and a half is 19 inches. All the two and a half inch ribbon is 14 inch pieces. So we'll kind of speed it up. Decent. When you go over red kits, love these colors, but never can find matching ribbons. <laughs> um, so I do have wreath kits. However, the wreath kits that I make available, um, they're as unique as my designs. So they are truly one of a kind designs, which means I haven't made them, but I've made something similar, like maybe the same method <clears throat> that you can follow, but never the exact same design because I don't want you to have something that I've made. I want you to have something that is an original that nobody else has so that your customers feel exclusive, like you have the only one. So you can find those on my website. I'll have Steve pen the link. Um, if you just go to products um, and search by wreath kits, I have, I want to say about five kits available. I do have a snowman kit, but it's not like this one. It is adorable though. And I have a ton of people saying, well, we would buy it if you made it. If I make it, then it's no longer available. It's an exclusive one of a kind kit. So you can follow the design because it comes with everything you need, including, you know, how long do you cut? 
your inch and a half pieces, what ribbon goes where, everything is all laid out for you. So that it would be like this, except that you cut it, you're cutting your mesh. That way, if you decide maybe you want to use something different, which I have tons of people say, oh, this goes great with an embellishment I had. I just never was able to find all the other stuff to go with it. Most of you gals decided to make the kit into a wreath. If Kat shipped out 20 or 30 of the same kits, then you have 20 or 30 people selling the same wreath. Exactly. So it's all about exclusivity. You want people to feel like they have the only one. That might be something we do in 2023 where I put a kit together and there will only be like five of them available. But again, I always wanted it so you guys had the one and only, the exclusive kit. Go ahead and place this one in, pop those on the outside, and you don't have to add the scatters and fillers. I just did because I thought it made for a nice complement instead of taking the ends of the pipe cleaner and tucking them behind. I thought, oh, they look great like this. Let's keep it going. Okay, about an inch and a half is where I leave them. Any more than that, it just kind of feels a little too long. And it's really super simple to come back and add all your, um, the glue to the scatters and fillers. You could add white, oop, that one's pink. Grab the wrong one. That one's just a little too long. So we're playing with these retro colors of the turquoise, red and white. Hi, Maria from El Paso. I'm glad you like this method and you are so welcome. I love to be able to share with you. And YouTube subscribers, if you're catching this on a replay, don't forget that you can comment as well. Any questions that you have, because I know you can't see the Facebook comments. If you have a question, let me know. I do go back and read through all of my YouTube comments and we'll answer those just for you. And if you'd like to join a Facebook Live, we are here every Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific and every uh, Sunday at the same thing, 5 p.m. Pacific. There we go. Hi, Carol. Welcome. What do you guys think of this color combination? I know it's not the traditional Christmas colors. But when I saw the sign that Pam had, I was like, oh, I really like those colors together. They remind me of my mom's blown glass Christmas ornaments from like, well, she probably had them in the 60s, 50s and 60s maybe. But I loved opening those up. Those were like a highlight of Christmas time. Hi, Donna. Welcome. Thank you, Donna. She says, that's beautiful. I love the colors. Sometimes we get the inspiration not only from a sign, but it could come from the ribbons as well. And these scatters and fillers are ones that I've had from Hobby Lobby for a while. 
You can sometimes find them at the Dollar Tree. Amazon sells them if you just look for, um, I think the reason why we yield to the scatters and fillers names is because that's what Hobby Lobby labels those. Like right now in their Christmas section, they probably have red, red and white. They have a rose gold. They have your red, white, and green. Um, don't know if they do blue. I know they have some crazy retro color right now. They have one that looks like crushed peppermints. So that one's really pretty, especially if you're doing a candy cane wreath. So between the snowman and the sign, I'm like struggling to figure out where would I put a bow. Shelby asked, are you doing the deer on Friday? Uh, yes, I will be doing the deer on Friday. Because we asked you guys on Friday to vote for snowman or the winter deer. And overwhelmingly, it was like snowman. So we're doing the snowman today and we'll do the deer on Friday. Chelsea, I love that light blue snow deer finesse in your ribbon you are using. Mm, they're pretty. Chelsea, I love those colors together. The ribbons above the mesh. I know, the mesh is really pretty. Considering that it's fairly thin, it came out really, really well. Because usually sometimes the mesh that begins with the letters XB, we used to call extra bad. Like, don't buy it. <laughs> but this, it's changed. So it's really nice. Snip, snip. Open this, flip it around. We're getting to the end. And they go, um, if people wondered, how difficult is it to take those scatters and fillers? They're little styrofoam balls. So they go on the pipe cleaners super easy. They just go right through like they're butter. So we'll pop. Jenna says, I look forward to the deer on Friday. So do I. I think we're going to do a grapevine for that one. I just haven't decided if we're going to do an oval grapevine or a regular round grapevine. But we'll add lots of like snowy pine and pine cones, things that I you'd find the, outside. I really miss the deer heads that they had three years ago. I know. Maybe someone will just start crafting them. Maybe you could do that. You could just design that, bring that back. They were so cute because they weren't like the cartoon deer heads. They actually looked really nice. They didn't look like stuffed deer heads, but they had an element to them that made them look really nice. They were only out for like two years, and then they discontinued them, and they started making all the goofy cartoon ones. Simona's cat, does the mesh ruffle? Yes, it is. I was going to do a folded ruffle, but with this mesh being a tad too thin, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't have covered this way as much as I would have liked. We would have had gaps in the center. And what I'll do is I'll show you guys like a prelim, like I'll lay everything out and show you where it's going to go, like signage wise, and then where I'm thinking about putting the plush. 
and then you can let me know um, if you like it just that way or should we add a bow hi Linda no worries about being late we're kind of doing a retro snowman Can totally hear one of our jays is really mad so something's made him mad outside usually it's when we sit out there he wants us to leave okay last one i really love these two colors together Shall we ask the deer will be a grapevine? No. The deer is not a grapevine. The design base will be a grapevine. Right. Yeah, the deer is not a grapevine. Well, the deer wreath will be a grapevine, I guess, yes. Right. But the deer itself right. is not a grapevine. So right. I just want to like really specify. She will be like, oh, she's making a deer grapevine. And we're not crafting an actual deer from grapevine. Yep. The base will be a grapevine. Okay, so there this is. Let me remove the pipe cleaners on the inside. So there's one. And all I'm doing is when I cut them off, I'm just pushing the little end that's left on the pipe cleaner back down to the center. Make sure blue. And last one is the red. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like. See how sometimes you just smash them without realizing that you did? Okay, so sign, right? Not pretty. And I'm sorry you guys are seeing like a horrible glare on that. Um, let me kind of tilt this up a bit. Kind of like that. So there's that. Kind of want it pushed off to the side. And then I wanted to take my snowman I wanted to kind of push his little bottom down in here, kind of like he's welcome to Frosty's Snowflake Bakery, like this. It's gonna kind of be under the sign a bit. And then this will all be pulled forward. So see what I'm saying? Where would you put a bow? I mean, I guess we can make a small one, but then I'm feeling like it's just way too overdone. So this is where I was saying, I need your help. I need your input on this. Should we do a bow or no bow on this design? Looking at it kind of falling into place like so. You can even be doing it low, I guess. His arms are wired, so you can do whatever you want with his arms. Just like that. It's got a little candy cane in the side. It's pretty little scarf. What do you guys think? Linda says no bow. Love the look. Josie says no bow. Okay. Della says no bow. Simone says no bow. Okay. Oh, all right. Kathy says, I think a small bow. I wouldn't put a bow. I think it's more than great. Okay. 